Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. Mm -hmm. And we got to the Conexus Center and they said, you guys are in the basement. And when they said basement, they meant basement. Mm -hmm. We walked in and we all said, it looks like we're selling these people (laughs) timeshares. We weren't. I mean, we should have. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? What is that stench? And there was a girl standing next to him and she said, that was me. You don't like that? (laughs) Mm-hmm. She grabbed his glass of beer, put it on the ground, squatted, and farted into his glass of beer. And then... Farted on demand. And then he, she, he said, like, what are you doing? And then she punched him in the face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> You're listening to the Jay and Dan Podcast. Dance. Dance. So long, November. Never liked you. And it looks like winter is over. It does seem that way in Toronto right now. It's beautiful out. I know. I wore a sweater today. It's supposed to be uh, 9 or 10 degrees tomorrow or something like that. Yeah, it is. Okay, I'll take it. God, I I really... I could just... F- winter could just... F- <laughs> it hasn't even started. Just... F- winter. Nah, that's nah, fun. No. The tobogganings, the skiing, yeah, the I'll, snowboarding. I'll go to the, I'll go to the territories. <laughs> you, winter. I'll Stay let's... the f- away from us. That's a hot take. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I like about our podcast is become all hot takes. We become hot take artists. I listened to the pod last week. I don't normally listen to anything or watch anything we do. Get some yerb into us. And uh, I listened to it. I'm not sure why, but it just came up on my phone. So I was driving home You're last like, Tuesday. You're like, who are these idiots? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was good. Like, it's... It's a pretty good podcast, I have to say. After 10 years, still pretty entertaining. Here's the thing. It's mindless. Some of these other podcasts, you have to pay attention, and you're like, ah, oh, I've got to rewind it. I missed something. This one, you don't have to. No, you don't have to do a goddamn thing. Just we do all the back, heavy lifting. Just sit back, pull down your pants, and enjoy. Enough. <laughs> Went there. <laughs> hey, are we allowed to say what we did today? I think we are, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think I think we are. Yeah. So uh, you and I saw each other in the wild. Yeah. Downtown Toronto. Um, by the way, after we did uh, what we did, uh, let's <laughs> oh. <laughs> keep teasing it. Keep teasing it. Don't reveal it yet. Let's tease it. I um, oh there, big boy. Yeah. T- keep teasing that. I had to take the long drive back home, so I'm like, I better get some food in my belly. Oh, I stopped boy. at a place and... Uh, Where'd you stop? It was right across the street. It had an orange sign. It was like wraps. Orange or... Julius? <laughs> <laughs> no, and it wasn't a NW. It was some... I'm like, I'll give it a shot. It looks clean. Oh, boy. And I'm like, I've never been here. What's good? And she says, ah, Philly uh, steak is good. Ooh, that's all I can taste for the last five hours. Ooh, what happened? Not tasty. I still, still scarfed gurg- it down. Still gurgling. I still scarfed it. But you had one bite. You're like, this is a mistake. But you were so hungry. You thought, I got <laughs> I to gotta push through here. I need something in my belly. I finished the whole It was still good. It's just, you know, some of those foods you have in the aftertaste. Lingers. Yeah, the lingering aftertaste is never a, a great thing, is it? <laughs> I spent, after we did what we did... <laughs> I love that we're continuing to tease this. After we did what we did, I literally did. uh, We were joking how, like, I'm living the hipster lifestyle. I literally took a milk carton, a milk crate, rather, of records to rotate this on Ossington. A record shop? A long standing record shop in Toronto. Used to be on Queen, now it's on Ossington. Brought them in to, uh, to sell them. So I dropped them off. Then we did what we did. Then I went back. And it was one of those things because Jamie, our director, is a massive vinyl guy. He owns thousands of records. I I may have maybe 1,000 records, maybe. 
And that's a lot of records. I guess it is. Yeah, I guess that's a lot of records. Or maybe it's, maybe I have five hundred. I don't even it's know. Still a lot. And um, so I had a few to sell, and Jamie said, "Yeah, I'll go there." Anyway, they. It was one of those pleasant retail experiences where not only were they super friendly and kind, but they actually gave me more for the records than I thought I was going to get. How much scratch you get? A couple hundred bucks. Wow, really? Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to say 20, 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Those dollar, dollar bills, y'all. And then I was forced to spend it on a Kids Bop double vinyl <laughs> album. I just saw it and I was like, oh, there you go, your profits. There it is. I guess I got to buy that. Do you think maybe you had a hidden gem in there you didn't know about? And they're like, holy f- we're going to just get this guy real I think there were a few hidden gems in there, and they weren't hidden. Like, I knew I had some good stuff, but I wasn't, I honestly wasn't sure what was going to happen. But it was a nice experience. Anne Murray Greatest Hits. That's right. I saw there was a Kenny Rogers Christmas album I came very close to picking up, but I prefer the Kenny and Dolly Christmas album. Mm-hmm. That's a classic. Can we play a little bit of the Kenny and Dolly Christmas album stuff? I don't think I've heard it. Now, are you playing Christmas music around the house, around the O'Toole Mansion? Uh, we were playing it on Saturday because the Santa Claus parade was uh, going on. We'll get into that, but we should talk about what we did in Toronto. Oh, yeah. We, have, we still haven't said what we did, what we met up and did this afternoon. That's right. We um, we, went uh, to the third floor of a downtown, an old downtown building. We did. This is not even a lie. <laughs> um, Wait, what kind of testicle is this? And we stood behind microphones, staring in each other's eyes, and we recorded our voices... For the Corner Gas animated series. Yeah, season three, I believe. We're going to be in a cartoon. I'm very excited about it. We were in the, as many of you may know, we were in the Corner Gas movie. That was a great experience. Mm -hmm. I uh, was reminding Brent Butt, the star and co-creator of Corner Gas, about how when we were at the movie... um, Eric, who plays Oscar, his dad, is a hilarious actor. He's amazing. He was there in, like, you know, he's in the movie, and he's in, like, full full costume. Not in character, but he's in full costume, sitting, having lunch. And uh, we end up sitting beside him, and Brent comes up to us, you know, with Eric. And he says, Eric, this is Jay and Dan. They're, you know, sportscasters. They have a show. And he just could not, Eric could not wrap his head around who we were. Well, at first what we he did. said was, Who? <laughs> And then he's like, you came all the way from Toronto for this. Why? <laughs> and he like, Brent was trying to explain the show. And he just was not, it just was not registering at all. And then he told us today because he pays attention to politics and arts. and that's He's it. like a, a true actor, like a true artist. He has no time for sports. No time for our shenanigans. No time for the people chasing the balls and such. No time left for you. Great. Guess who song? We play a little bit of that. Do you have the Kenny? Oh, and Kenny Dolly? Dolly. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is Christmas to remember. Or is this I believe in Santa Claus? Christmas to remember. Oh, f- yes. A Christmas to remember. Springtime feelings in the middle of the Killing it. It's okay. It's probably the only listen I make <laughs> or have. I'm making a listen. You need to make a listen to this. You need to get this album. Hey, I listen. Put it in rotation. I listen to Dean Martin Christmas. I listen to Harry Connick Jr. Christmas. I listen to Michael Bublé. Um, and what about I, Frank? What about Sinatra? Eh, not really. Um, no Sinatra? And I discovered that Harry Connick Jr., I've said this before, first CD I ever bought was when the Harry Met Sally soundtrack. He is playing his Christmas album in New York before Christmas, so I might... uh... Oh, okay. Okay, he's performing it. I like that. That's right. I saw another Christmas record I really like is the She and Him Christmas records. Mm -hmm. That's Zoe Deschanel. You sent that to me last year. Really good records if you're... uh... If you're into good records. And anyway, they are also, they're doing the same thing. They're on a tour right now and they are just playing their Christmas uh, tunes. It'd be kind of fun. Zoe. You know, she's going out with one of the Property Brothers? I think I knew that, yeah. That's crazy. The one with the the hair and the, the beard? Well, they. Don't they, don't, don't they look the same? Yeah, aren't they yeah. twins? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> I think it's Zach. But I think she's with Zach. I think she's with Zach. Zach twin. Um, 
His last name is Twin. Yeah, anyway, nice so we're in the, we won't reveal any more about the Corner Gas uh, recording, but we uh, did it, and it'll be out this summer. Yeah, yeah, we can't say what our characters were, but I have to say the script is really funny. We will be able to play it on our show because it is a Crave production. That's true. That's true. So we'll be able to show the clips on our show if Tim can fit it in. Actually, no, I don't know if we... It's so convoluted, the things we can play and I can't. Know. I know. You're right. It, yeah, there's... I'm pretty sure, though, Brent will be like, yeah, just play it. Like, <laughs> but, but yeah, Tim for sure will be like... Well, is it going to take away from my 10th Janny? <laughs> the Jannies is a segment on our TV show. It's some of the, you know, our, our favorite and least favorite plays of the day, we call it. So there's some bad plays and some good ones. And Dan and I, I think, are on board with this segment, but maybe like would like it to be like five, six Jannies. Because a lot of them you see three times. A really good play you'll see three times during the show. I'm yeah. like, okay. Two's enough. And Tim's always like, great video. You can't see it enough. People don't sit and watch the whole show front to back. Like, actually, they do. They watch it multiple times while they're getting ready for work and things in the morning. I just, I would just like to cut that down a little bit. He dropped the Buffalo Bills pack, his favorite team in the world, to get extra jannies in the show yesterday. Like a play from a ninth division Swedish soccer league. Yeah, there was like this play from college soccer. And Tim's like, it's a great play. And Jamie, our director, like, yeah, it's a great play. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. It's f-ing soccer from Division Three NCAA. I could probably step in and make a couple of great bicycle kicks. Well, was it on the Fox show or was it on this one where Tim would get bamboozled by these people that make these golf videos where they're like, take the shot and... Oh, no, I fell in the pond. Oh, how did that happen? Like, <laughs> fully planned. He's like, no, it's not. <laughs> Why is someone recording that then? <laughs> yeah, Tim, Tim's goal is to get our faces off of television. <laughs> That's his MO at this point. So maybe the animated versions of us will start hosting the show. I mean, it would be kind of cool if they could animate a whole episode of the show. Ooh. Hey, okay? wouldn't that be fun? I think we might have to look into that. We might. That would be really, really cool. Or at least just one one section of the show. Yeah, just a portion of it maybe because, yeah, maybe. Uh, but I don't know. Animation seems to happen so quickly now. Maybe, they, maybe we could wear those suits. You know, those crazy suits. That, oh, the green ones. Yeah, yeah, with all the lights around it. And, and uh, we could wear those, those things. <laughs> I'll send an email because I make things work pretty quick around here. Oh, boy. <laughs> do you do you ever? Yeah. Um, I have to say, though, very sad week on the show. Uh-oh. What Stoff, happened? I don't know if you, if you knew this, but this is Cameraman Glenn's final week on oh, Sports I Center with Jane Dan. Someone was dying. Oh, it feels that way. <laughs> it is his last week. He's been at this network since, like, Day one. 40 years. 45 might even be 45. Like he started when he was in his early and, 20s. And yeah, when I say network, I mean CTV. Yeah, he, he's been at CTV for at least 40 years. And now he's retired. He just turned 65 this past weekend. What a career. And he's seen some crazy So maybe we should get him on the podcast uh, next week and or check in. We'll check in uh, on retirement. I like the idea of it. Now, we already have, uh, oh, we have a good one next week. Terry. No. Terry, David. Okay, we've got, here's the next two weeks. This is pretty exciting. We actually booked ahead for once. We did? Next Monday, the second, Gary Roberts. Wow. Will be in studio with us. Uh, we're going to talk uh, his career. Workouts. We'll do, we'll do rapid fire. But, yeah, we of course, we'll focus on the workouts. He trains Connor McDavid. He trains Phil Kessel. Think of those two athletes. He trains them both. How do you manage that? Because obviously they have a different approach to fitness. So we're going to talk to Gary. And then the week after that, legendary VJ, DJ, and bon vivant of Canadian pop culture, Terry David Mulligan. TDM. Will make his first appearance on the podcast. We were just on the Mulligan Stew podcast I highly encourage you to check it out. I listened to the interview. It was pretty good. 
It was pretty good. We we do an annual interview with him on his Mulligan Stew podcast about the Grey Cup. You brought in Grey Cup chili yesterday. Delicious. Yeah, problem is, though, so so it was um, simmering all day on the stove. Hot Ooh. stove. And got to the bottom, and you know, the stuff burns to the bottom. Mm. I'm, I've been soaking her for a while and re-soaking it. It's still Ooh. on there. I need to get, like, a chisel out. Is it a expensive pot? No, it's the one that the kids returned to my tree in Halloween. It's the same pot. Oh, right. That's my chili pot. It's the only time I use it. Is it? Maybe time to treat yourself to a new chili pot? No, there's nothing wrong with it. That would be nice for the holidays. Kids could get you that. Okay. I'll say I need a new chili pot. Because this one, I don't know if I'm going to spend any more time trying to clean it. Might have been been its last chili. It's a bye-byes. It go bye-bye. Now, today we've got a couple of dynamite guests. Um, And I'm really looking forward to chatting with them. Do we want to... Give uh, no, I'll give our first. He's been give, on the show before. He's been on a couple times. Art Man, Art Man, former uh, Wild On host. That's right. We met him in L.A. We became good buddies, and uh, he's been on. He still has uh, Art Man presents. Uh, he goes around talks to wild, crazy people. I don't think he's ever been to a Grey Cup. Uh, he's got to do it. I think we mentioned that last time he was on. He has been to a Riders game. I know that. Okay. Again, he only goes to events where he can drive to because uh, he doesn't like to fly. That's crazy <laughs> that he did that show all those years. No, but he m- had to have fl- flown for Wild On because well, they went in to Thailand. He <laughs> was in Europe. You can't drive there. No, you can't get into a car and drive to Thailand from from Los Angeles. Yeah, I don't know if we've ever asked him that. Okay, maybe that'll be the first art. So you don't like to um, fly. So when you did uh, exotic locations for Wild On, how the hell did you get there? Okay. All right. Are we, we're going to dive in with this. That's right how away? we do Dude, it, Art. After my Achilles? That's yes. how we do it, Art. <laughs> well, listen, I like, I like your style, and I'm not here to judge that. <laughs> but before we get to that answer, which is going to be absolutely just, I, I'm probably going to cry while I explain it. Oh, no. Oh, uh, I want to say I love you, boys. And oh. this is cool. We miss you, We buddy. miss you, buddy. I miss playing uh, catch with the football on the beach in L.A. Oh, what a bromance. It was, <laughs> and why wasn't Jay there? I don't get why Jay wasn't part of this. I, I, I don't like to socialize. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, listen, I can explain something. Because I know people come on, and you guys have a lot of, you know, you'll have like a, an NHL guy, and he's like, hey, what's up, buds? And he's just, he's real cool. I'm not cool. I just, like, I try to be, but I'm not. And I got to tell you guys, I'm big. Fa- I'm a big fan. Like I love you guys. I listen to the podcast. You guys are my mentors. You're my podcasting mentors. Hey, Canadians love you. A, a large uh, portion of your podcast are Canadians <laughs> that listen. That is true. That is true. I, I think uh, I don't know what it is. I think because we. All, I mean, come on, man. We all we all love the same things. Drunk people, good yep. times. Yeah, that's pretty much the Canadian and, mo right there. Drunk people in and good I've times. Copied, I've copied you guys with the the name of the podcast. And mine's called the Jane Dan Podcast. And then, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so get a, of, so, get a lot of hits. So therapy <laughs> session starts now. Let's hear this. Now we really have to learn about these no, uh, flights. It's not. <laughs> like, were you just heavily? You were heavily sedated, right? I I, I have okay okay yes I will confess I have flown while under the influence of things. Right, but um, no, I just I just got I got burnt out on on the flying thing. So it's just like uh, I prefer to to drive places, man. It's a whole nother. I've driven to Canada. I love I love this. Is it I because of the thing. because we discovered this because we hit the road every two weeks for our pod <laughs> our live podcast tour and we discovered it take yes going in an airplane on and off up and down it takes a toll on your body. Is that what it did? It takes okay all right. I, I, I didn't know it was this kind of podcast, but no, what it is, is I'm a, I don't know if you ever noticed, I'm a, I'm kind of a, I have a lot of energy, I'm kind of a, a somewhat of a hyper person. Oh, what? No, we never maybe, noticed. Maybe a little ADD, <laughs> and so I get on the plane, and I'm bored, and I want to mm. open a window and stick my head out, it, and, <laughs> and they don't like it. They don't like the passenger that has that look like he's going to open the window. They yeah. frown on that guy. You know what's funny, Art? It, the fact that you and Dan get along so well makes so much more sense hearing <laughs> that you want to open a window on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Listen, it's, it's kind of like with you guys because you guys have the chemistry you guys have. Is, it's so unique. Like, 
you were very different yet very alike at the same time. And then I know I, I enjoy Dan because I like I like when Dan goes off on stuff. Oh <laughs> yeah, me too, Art. I'm so with you there. I, yeah. There's nothing better in the world than when Tulsi gets fired up about something. <laughs> uh. Do you, can I ask like a, a, a fan question? Yeah, not really a fan question, but. Um, a friend question. Like I said on my podcast, I just had a, a guy from the E Channel. We used to work together at the E Channel, and it was kind of fun talking like host to host. Ryan you know Seacrest. No, <laughs> it wasn't Seacrest. Won't do my podcast. You kidding me? <laughs> no, it was Todd <laughs> Newton. He's a game show guy, and he does. He's done a million things at the E Channel. He's yeah. done like all the all the live shows and everything. But no, but host to host. I have a question for you guys. Do you okay. guys ever? And I think I think you're because let's be honest, it, you know, it's not uh, called the Art Man Podcast; it's called the Jane Dan Podcast. So I think I think your people would like this. Do you guys ever get nervous, like because you do all this stuff, stage shows and and, the t- and so much TV? Do you get get nervous ever? Maybe a bit before the live ones because uh, there's really no safety net for uh, the TV show. There's only a couple people in the studio. You kind of forget who's watching. At least that's uh, that's how I feel. I remember uh, very early in my career, Art, a veteran like news reporter. I was like volunteering at a TV station, and this veteran news reporter. And I said, I get nervous. Like, how do you not get nervous? He was about to go live and do this big live hit on the six o'clock news, and he just said, "Well, it's just me and a camera guy. What's there to be nervous about?" Now that, right, right, I right. guess yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, like it's so funny how certain people can compartmentalize it that way. Um, and I, from then on, I kind of was able to do that. And you almost need someone to say something like that to you at some point. Nah, I don't want to think, think about I it. Get, I get excited. Do you guys still get excited? Like, oh, is for still, sure. Like, is it still a cool thing to you? I feel like nervousness and excitement are kind of a similar thing. I think yeah. I heard that uh, from a porn star who was about to try <laughs> anal for the first time. Like, she was like, Ooh. I'm... I, you know, like I'm nervous, but I'm trying to to channel that into excitement because they have they're the same emotion. So if you're ever thinking that, were you in the same room? No, I think it was like an interview I saw. <laughs> oh, got you. <laughs> it was the deep cuts. <laughs> I like to I go into the time, DVD anytime, extras. <laughs> well, I feel like there's a nervousness that comes with the word anal. Just when I say it right there, I think we all get a little right, nervous. Right. Exactly. Yeah, you pucker, you pucker up a little. <laughs> Pucker, hey, the anal. <laughs> what, what can this? I'm looking at. It says uh, the exchange rate. So my one dollar is is worth one thirty three up there. Wow, that's what it's at right now. Yeah, wow. it's insane. Like you hit an ATM here with a, a American dollars or from an American account, and it it's like you you won from a slot machine. So wait, so yeah, okay. So let's do this since I know you guys are on a are on a, I'm, I do the travel stuff. You guys, it's, you know, it's, we try to stay in, in the sports area. But this is sort of a travel thing. What does this? What does this get me? Like, what can I? How can I benefit from this right now? Well, you can <laughs> stay in a really nice hotel for. It's almost like half off. Yeah, yeah, you're getting a massive, That's massive what, discount. We always tell anyone from the states, like, go up to Canada because the bang for your buck is extraordinary, and you get to yeah, visit Canada. And it's um, yeah, just that you can't bring the stuff home though. Well, you can bring some things home. Oh no! Are you yeah. talking about about drugs? We'll get those no, to I, you. Whatever. I don't know. Whatever I buy up there. Oh no! We let you bring whatever you want. You can you can bring what is you know maybe a thousand bucks worth of uh, worth of maple syrup or something. Yeah, you can stock up on all your Canadian fashions. Your your, your podcast has grown. Like, what is like? Help me out here, man, because. You know it's it's relatable because everyone has a podcast. So everyone listening probably has a podcast yeah, also. That's true. Like, how did you guys grow your podcast? Like, what's the what's the secret? Just well, we've been doing it for that you were born with. Well, that too. I mean, we can't deny it, Art. But at the same time, we've been <laughs> doing. It. It. Yeah, you feel it through the uh, the speakers in your car or maybe your headphones. I think it's actually we've been on for ten years doing ten this years. podcast. And we were like the that's first crazy. podcast. No, you really did inspire me, and I don't know. I don't know if um, if I told this before in your podcast, but you have probably had less people listening. But it was funny because I drove into Canada, and the customs guy, he actually recognized me from my travel, my drunken travel adventures. Right. And he's and he's like, and and I was lying on the form saying I was going there for just for vacation, and he goes, "Oh, what are you shooting up here?" And so 
I, I was torn. I didn't know whether to be honest with this guy because I didn't understand. Maybe it was trickery, but I don't think you guys do that. <laughs> and then, so he let me in. And then it was funny because then coming back into my, my own country, my homeland, the place where I was born, the guy at the border could not believe that he goes, what were you doing in Canada? I said, hey, we do a travel TV show. We travel around and talk to drunk people. And he goes, someone pays you to travel around and talk to drunk people? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, pull over there, please. And <laughs> He just went. He didn't. He didn't believe that this is such a thing. Yeah, that's like when I went to Detroit, and I uh, I went to literally <laughs> check out a hotel in Detroit, and the guy's like, "No, well, what are you really doing?" I'm like, "I'm going to check out the Shinola Hotel." They just don't. He's like, "You drove all this way to check out a hotel." He goes, "Open your trunk." <laughs> and that's where they found the body. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they get to the bottom of the real story. Yeah. So I, I know you guys have me on here because I'm an expert when it comes to drunken travel. Would you like me to uh, give your listeners an idea of some events they should be doing in the next few weeks? Yeah. Yes, like Christmas Absolutely. events. You've got some? Yes. I have some, my friend. I wow. always have them queued up. This is what I do. Okay, I love this. What do you got? I'm actually, this is a sidebar. I'm actually working on this event for December that I can't talk about yet, so maybe you'll have to have me back, but... Um, we just don't have everything uh, firmed up yet, but, we're, but we may be doing something pretty cool, pretty uh, a live thing in December. But um, we'll, uh, I'll come back on if that happens. Okay. Anyway, here's what you should do, listeners, for December. Uh, on, the, on, <laughs> so stupid. on the 7th of December, I recommend you go to New Orleans. Have you guys been there? I've never, never been. been. I've never been. You what? must have been a million times. This guy's driving to Detroit to look at a hotel, and you you guys aren't going to New Orleans? You know what's funny, Art? I believe New Orleans was on the table that weekend for Dan. He was considering it. We discussed yeah, it. from Detroit, it's just, shoot, it's only like a 14-hour drive. You right. There. right. But he only had two <laughs> days, and I think... Yeah, you need more than two days in New Orleans. Do you? Yeah. I think it was more the, the flight was like bonkers expensive. Yeah, so what's going on in New Orleans before Christmas? Okay, it's this thing called the running of the Santas. And what's cool about this is most of your Christmas events, people are bundled up. This brings out, and I know Jay will like this, it brings out the slutty Santa costume. <laughs> you know, and again, it's not so much the slutty Santa costumes, it's the fact that, that the weather, that there's no winter. I'm, I'm done with okay. winter art. Yeah, so so bring it on. Yeah, bring on the slutty Santa. Yeah, I'm so on that page. I'm from New England. I live in Southern California. I'm so on that page. Trust yeah. Me. Yeah. yeah, so it, it's called Running of the Santas, but don't be frightened. There's very little running in this event. The guy that, that runs this thing is a genius. You run, I think, I think it's like, I think it's like 150 meters or something that you run. It's not like it's, it's not a, it's not a, what do you call it, marathon or anything. 150 but, meters? <laughs> is that far? No, I, no. I should have stuck with the, I should have stuck with English. Yeah, I went that's with right. metric to try to, you know, <laughs> <In class. laughs> I'm just trying to blend. <laughs> okay, so that's a good right. one. You run. So, well, I don't think people are going to go to compete. Just go watch. Just go to New Orleans. No, just... it really is like two. I'm going back. It really is like 200 yards or something. 180 yards or something. Okay. And so you just run from. It's just. A, it's just. A, everyone gathers together. And then they have a, a start, and everyone just runs, kind of jogs down the street to the next location, and then it's a big warehouse. And it's just everyone dressed like Santa, just just freaking, and you're in New Orleans. You, what what you just in, described is pretty much just a pub crawl, isn't it? No, this is different. I will get to a pub crawl. This Ooh. one is not a pub crawl. It's running of oh. the Santas, where they just, you run a block. I'm, I've changed it to a block now. I'm not measuring it anymore. Okay. okay. And you just get to this warehouse, and it's just a big party inside of a warehouse, and you're all dressed like Santa. So, uh, hello, Christmas spirit. You're okay, I like that. It. So that's December 7th in New Orleans. What else? Where's this pub crawl? And don't forget the slutty costumes for Jay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, then I recommend on the 14th, if you're just taking the whole month off, you should hit all three of these December events that I have for well, you. Well, good weekend December trips. December yeah. 14th. Huh? Weekend trips. That's good. Yeah. By the way, did I mention I love this podcast? You guys oh, are great. man, it's great having you on, Art. This is fun. I can't wait I like to. I'm, I'm, I hope it's fun. I hope, like, because you guys, uh, yeah, anyway. So on the 14th, I want you to go to Reno, which is. Oh, boy. I, I don't know what the tourism board is calling it, but you could call it Poor Man's Vegas because it's, it's, everything's very inexpensive there and it's 
similar vibe, but it's but it's a very small. It's the biggest little city in America. And a lot of seniors there, aren't there? Uh, what? A lot is that, of seniors. Is that a real thing? Yeah, I, I, that's where they go because it's cheap. Oh, I I don't is, I don't know if that's a thing. They're, well, they're not get at this ready event. to see a bunch of slutty seniors. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're not at this. I don't think it's the. I don't know. I oh, don't they'll know. be Maybe there. I think is this one you've been to before? Is this another Santa event? Yeah. No, this one. This one. I, I endorse this thing because it's fantastic, and I, I have gone before. It's so. What it is? It's thirty thousand people dressed like Santa doing a, a pub crawl, and I think it's like twenty bars or something. So it's it's just so entertaining. If you like people watching, or you just want to you want to see throw up on a beard. Okay, so for both you know, of these, I guess everyone's got to really invest in a Santa costume. Yeah, and uh, and, and like vomit on a beard. <laughs> Yeah, multiple Santa costumes. That, I don't want you bringing the same costume from New Orleans oh, to Reno. Yeah. And also, this, you should know this because one will be warm. Reno will actually be a little chilly, man. It's probably oh. be like 30 degrees or something. Or, uh, well, shoot, what's the Celsius on yeah, that? Yeah, I don't even know. It's zero. around zero. Yeah. That so I recommend that. 30,000 drunk Santas in Reno on the 14th. That sounds Which good. is fantastic. And like I said, Reno, very interesting little place. It's just like this little mini Vegas I mean, that, that, oh, Art, I was just going to say, that'd be a great title for your book, 30,000 Santas in <laughs> Reno. It could be. I, there's a lot of good titles for my book, I think. <laughs> I, uh, why not get on the airplane, you <laughs> is another one I'm thinking of. <laughs> 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 I'm uh, driving everywhere, you <laughs> is another, there's another, just some titles I'm working with. Over don't, here. don't buy a house in Fort Worth. Wasn't that another one? Is that <laughs> Some other, yeah, there's all sorts of ones. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you have a good memory. I wish, uh, <laughs> uh, I wish you didn't. I'm sorry. So, um, no, it's fine. <laughs> and, then, and then I recommend, hey, by the way, how cool is this? I'm bringing some content to the table. I don't yes, even do this on my good. own podcast. Yep. We have, to get an, we have to get to another guest, so you need to get to <laughs> oh, the sorry, final sorry. event. <laughs> I thought I just assumed when you called me, I assumed that means that someone canceled. So I thought I just had. To no, we've had you booked for a week. <laughs> Not, believe me, that's that's an advance. Usually, it's okay. Twenty minutes before we faster. start. So, December thirty first, I want you to go to Las Vegas for New Year's. Oh yeah, do you Tulsi. know about this? You got to do that. Is this another Santa? So tell us about New Year's. What's this all about? No, leave, <laughs> leave your Santa suit behind on this one. Okay, so it's just New Year's in Vegas. I can do that. Yeah, but it's not just Toolsy. I love you, but it's not just New Year's in Vegas. Okay. They well, closed down Las Vegas Boulevard. Ooh. No cars, no buses, no taxis, no Ubers. It's just people on the street, like a million of them. Literally a million people on the streets, yeah. and it's just fantastic. It's it's you know it's not going to be it is desert, so it's not going to be uh, tropical. I would still I would still bring some of that uh, Canadian gear you guys have. Santa suit. Your Santa suit. Yeah. You, well, look, no one's going to judge you if you're wearing the Santa suit. I'm going to wear a Santa suit top and nothing on the bottom. Just hang <laughs> hanging low. We, uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's perfect for New Orleans because that's a slutty, that's a slutty thing. Well, I get some beads if I show my peen. In Vegas? No, <laughs> in Vegas, you probably just be arrested. So, wait. That's so New Orleans. If, if people did. If people did all those, so if they did New Orleans, Reno, and then Vegas yep. all in yep. one month, they'd, wow. They'd die. I can't believe you're still alive, Art. I, uh, <laughs> so, like I said, I'm on my podcast, having that, that dude from the E channel was kind of fun because thinking back, that was before when I would actually just talk to celebrities. That was before the drunk people. Well, you need to have, uh, like Jules Asner on and have a little throwback time. I, uh, <laughs> Jules would be fun. I'm supposed to have Brooke. You remember Brooke Burke? I yeah. Over there? Yeah, yeah. She loves Skechers. Yeah, I'm supposed to have Brooke, but she's always working out. It's kind of hard for her to find a window to stop working out. How about she's Steve? It. How about Steve Kometko? He was an interesting guy. Kometko. You remember this? Okay, I, I, I have a Steve Kometko story for you. So I did. Steve Kometko was like classic news guy, and so yeah. I, I also worked on this E News Daily with him, right? Right. And so uh, 
I, I do this surfing story with Laird Hamilton, and I'm so proud of it. I'm like, this is fantastic. I'm out there in Malibu with Laird Hamilton surfing. Like, what a great story this is. And so now I'm in the newsroom, and I see Steve. And, you know, and, and again, I'm out there. I got the wetsuit on. I'm, I'm a surfer guy. Like, and I'm, you know, it, I just, I'm loving this story. I said, Steve, did you, see my, uh, did you see my surfing piece with Laird Hamilton? And he goes, you ever hear the expression, 10 pounds of in a five-pound bag? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good commit, go. <laughs> <laughs> it's really true. Hey, man, it's a little swell up in the, in the wetsuit. I thought it looked nice. I think you look. I think you always look good. Can I say, hey, hey, since you guys, you guys uh, are clearly just going to cut this out but anyway. So no, not at all. On, on my podcast, I, we just we, we just did a thing where I t- you tell all these celebrity stories. Ooh, Would you, can I tell my John Cougar Mellencamp yes. celebrity story? A hundred percent. Yes. Okay. So, I am. I am in. I'm at the Indy Five Hundred. You don't have to whisper. Thing for the, you don't have to whisper. <laughs> He's a very intimidating man. I'm at the I'm at the Indy 500, and uh, I'm there with Elaine Irwin. He was married to supermodel Elaine Irwin. Right, this? right. Yes, I do remember that. So she's co-hosting with me. We're doing a Indy 500 special for the E Channel, and so you know they always would have me and and someone attractive. <laughs> it was always the, <laughs> the formula. <laughs> hey. If it works, it works. Yeah. I, just, I checked a lot of the boxes, but not that one. So, And so I'm there with Elaine Irwin, and, and we're having a great time. You know, and I, I'm like you guys. Like, I, I'm just a, a friendly person. When I'm starting to work with someone, I, just feel, I feel like, uh, hey, we're tight now. You know, like we're, we've been working together all day. Like we're friends. Yeah. And so she gets a phone call, and she goes, oh, I got to take this. And I, in my head, I'm thinking, who is this that she has to take the call? And I'm thinking, it's got to be Johnny Cougs, right? Yeah, Johnny Cougs. And so she starts talking. You know, you can kind of tell. Like, I, I can tell that she's talking to her husband. And so I go like this. I go, hey, is that Johnny Cougs? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, you want to say hi? And I'm going, this is badass. I'm going to say hi to John Cougar Mellencamp. And I'm like, yeah, give me, yeah, give me that phone. So she hands me the cell phone. And I go, Johnny Cougs! And I'm going, Dude, this is great. Your, your wife is awesome. We've been wandering around doing all this Indy 500 stuff. She's so great. She's so nice. Everyone loves her. She's so great on camera. And uh, Johnny Coobs pauses, and he says the following to me. He says, yeah, she's still right there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was... That was uh, wow. that was the call. That was my. Wow. <laughs> Is she still right there? Hey, yeah, I'm like Johnny, I'm like Johnny, Johnny Coogs Coogs wanted no part of that phone conversation. No, and I did a whole, and I, I give you guys a quick version, but I was like, hey, it's our man, you know, that, that. like give her the whole thing, and then yeah, she's still there. And then I, oh yeah, 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 you know, hang on, like <laughs> clearly. And then did clearly, she hang uh, up with him and never speak to you again? Actually, she ended up never speaking to him again, I think. And they split up. He he got, got together with Meg Ryan. Oh. But I didn't not. Know this. Is that really what not, happened after that? Not Harry Met Sally, Meg Ryan. Scary surgery, <laughs> Meg Ryan. <laughs> Clown time. <laughs> okay, Art, we got to so go. Mean. Why am I laughing? <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm such a mean person on this podcast. Hey, kid. Can I do something with you guys? I, I know you're, you're rushing me out of here, and I, and I get it. It's, yeah, we've know. been trying for 10 minutes. It's a little bit of a pissing contest. I get it, you know. You, I understand. <laughs> this is the best. But can I do <laughs> I really love you guys, though. I, I know you think, like, the thing is, I'm not an actor, so I, I wouldn't, if I say I love you guys, and I were, if, if that was some sort of uh, something false I was, ma- I was making up, you would be able to see right through it because I'm not an actor. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Thanks no, for coming. Genuine. No. Thanks for coming on. On, on my podcast, I do a thing called the Seven Drunken Travel Questions, and it's a speed round, and I would like to do it with you guys. Okay. All right, ready? All right. I like how I'm it's just right. like, sure. sure okay. Real quick. We, okay. No, because it's fast. It's okay. Like okay. Right. We're ready. Let's okay, do it. let's do it. And, no, because I really want to know, too, because these are good for you. Okay, let's life. do it. All right. All right. What's the, stop <laughs> rushing me. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, we're ready. So, what's the first thing you pack? Underwear. Uh, weed. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best drinking song? Oh, uh, Home for a Rest, Spirit of the West. Home for a Rest, Spirit of the West. All right. Name the Spice Girls. Oh, Mel C, Mel B. Uh, uh, Scary. Back, Victoria. Uh, baby Spice and... Scary. Oh, no, uh, Ginger Spice. Ginger. Yeah. I think you got them all. It's, I think I, think I got them. Scary. Uh, favorite road trip destination? Vegas. I think for me it's L.A. Okay. Best drink to start out the night? Oh, I like an old-fashioned. Old-fashioned. Your go-to... And by the way, this next question inspired by David Hasselhoff. Your go-to drunk fast food. Oh, I love this question. Man, there's so many, but I got to go in and out. In and out. Yeah, in and out is uh, is fantastic, but a, a Big Mac combo never hurt anyone. Yeah, McDonald's isn't the worst. That's for sure. <laughs> and they've got a new sear on their Big Mac? Yum. <laughs> sure. They do. It's a, it's a thing. It's an advertising mean, campaign. It's taken forever, right? It's, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what is the best food to bring on a plane? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think uh, something non-smelly. Yeah, exactly. I hate when people bring smelly <laughs> on the plane, but I'm gonna say chips. Dan? nuts, cashews. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what celebrity would you like to see drunk? Oh man, I'd like to see uh, Helen Mirren, Dame Helen Mirren, and then, then I'd like to... <laughs> uh, Ben Affleck. <laughs> Uh, actually, I don't wish that and because finally, I think he's, uh, he's in place? rehab right now, so what? I don't want to see him. I don't want him to falter. Oh, yeah. um, Brad Pitt. I know. I... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, what is the drunkest place in North America? Oh, New Orleans. Regina. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, Saskatoon. Sorry. Saskatoon. Art, you have to go to a Grey Cup. You've got to get to one. I, I agree with this. I've been to a, a I went to a Rough Riders game. I like I like your CFL. I like the game. It's fast. I like the the what is it? Three downs. Yeah. yeah. So the Riders are hosting the Great Cup next year. So next you can year. go back to their brand new stadium. Oh man, Art, that would be the perfect uh, the perfect Great Cup fantastic. to go to. That would. Oh, we have to figure out a way to get you there. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll work on it. I just did. I did a bunch of us. Uh, I did these five sports specials. Um, but the one that the one that really stands out that I think you guys would enjoy is it was in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Eighty nine simultaneous mud volleyball uh, games going on. My God! All Absolutely right. fantastic. All right, we have to go now. <laughs> no wait, I have one thing though. I want to tell people that because uh, this is perfect for your Canadian. Listen, I love Canada. We have fifteen to twenty percent of our audience is Canadian, so I, I love these. I love that people are listening to my podcast. It's not nearly as action-packed as yours. Because with mine, we, we never have to rush anyone away because it's all we have is one guest, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I just want to say we have beanies. I'm, I'm selling these beanies on my website right now. And it has toques. animals banging toques. on them. No, we, we, we call them toques up here. Damn it. I went with beanies because I thought you would go beanies. No. So it's like I a, call it a hat. Yeah, or stocking cap. I know some people say stocking cap. But, uh, no, but if, you, if they go to artman.com, and I don't, I don't. The only reason, because I don't even pitch my other stuff that I sell. Yeah, I we've love these. we've seen some of your hats at our live podcast. Uh, That's awesome, by the way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, so- most popular, most popular is the high five or the cheer up face hat. That's right. <laughs> okay. I, I have both. Hats. I can't really wear them anywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you both some more. But these, these hats, we have uh, deer banging, bear banging, freaking elephants, giraffes, okay. uh, unicorns. The unicorns full are banging and there's a f- coming out of their butt. Okay. What? I said full-on animal f- hats. It, well, yeah, I didn't want to swear, Dan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so artman.com. Art, we really appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, you rock, man. No, you guys are. I'm, I seriously love you guys. Look, you, you, you inspired me to do a podcast, and I'm having a great time. I, don't you love podcasting? It, yes, we it do. has been really fun. Uh, especially when our when our we're able to wrap up our guests. <laughs> yeah, can I just ask? A, I'm going to ask a Dan question about your podcast. So, sure, sure. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, much, go ahead. How much? Uh, how much are you making on that podcast? <laughs> uh, that's a good one. That's funny. Um. <laughs> I love you both. Okay, thanks, thanks for Art. Me, man. Love okay. you, Art man. Take care, Bye, buddy. Art, man. Bye. Love you, bud. Uh,
All right, uh, let's bring in our second guest. Is is he going to be available still? I hope so. After wow, he's got nothing to do. That was a twenty minute hang up. That was uh, extensive. I would describe that as extensive. Well, I got to let Art know. Because that always happens. I need to say, hey, we need to keep it to five. We need to keep it to ten. We almost need to put a Ben Teller timer on him. Yeah, we almost do. I mean, he's so fun. I, he I, is very fun. I he's very him. full of energy, and he does love coming on. He always asks. He, he loves Canadians, and uh, he loves coming to events in Canada. So, uh, yes, we do have time for him, just not that much. No. <laughs> Well, you're going to get a longer podcast, so that's kind of fun, right? I mean... Do we have to be in the uh, TV studios to tape anything? I don't think so, but if we do, uh, we're going to be in trouble, so... Ah, uh, who cares? You didn't know we had a challenger. <laughs> hey, Matt Cause, uh did you ever watch Wild On on E! back in the day? Was um wasn't that like one of those like things where it like, looked took took place like in like Jamaica? Yeah, they went to yes. all like uh, uh yeah. to yeah. to really nice warm locales, and it was Art Man and Brooke Burke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that was before like internet pornography really took off. <laughs> so that was the like, so yes, you did watch it. Yeah, so yeah, Art, so Art Man like, was just on. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Really? Oh. Wow. I, I I'm following him up. I feel. Uh, I feel honored, but that was back in the day when you know men just needed to see flesh any yes. way possible. So that's why those shows were out there. Yeah, that's a very good point by you. Yeah. Like that was we're also simple. like we're such it, simple creatures. Yeah, like that was Friday night. So you got the the baby blue movies on City yeah. TV, right? You had the Skinamax. You, you had all that stuff, and it was all uh, masturbatory material. But but not even that. <laughs> Speaking of needing to see something, so you'd have always a central figure that was a. A woman wearing tight clothes or something like WKRP. Uh, you got uh, Dukes of Hazard. Well, uh, Art was got, right. Yeah, it would be a hottie. Like yeah. Jules Asner was the first. Then Brooke Burke, he mentioned. There was another one, Cindy, someone after that. Uh, but Art was always there. And yeah, it was always fascinating to me because Art was just very normal looking. But some, like, so I, I figured you'd go with like hot girl, buff guy. But they were like, no, no. Let's switch it up. I like that they did it that way. Yeah, and he's a very likable guy, so that's why they went with him. Here's the thing about the likable guy. I used to watch Benny Hill when I was 11, just for the, the moment when the, when the women would be running around in, like, bad sort of uh, lingerie. You know, that's that was me in 1986. Can they even show Benny Hill now? Can they even show it on reruns? I don't think they can. I doubt it. I, I, I doubt they can. You know, just because of where we are, and it's not the end of the world. The comedy, when you rewatch, it's not that good. Doesn't but, hold up, does it? Yeah, but when you were twelve in nineteen eighty-seven, that yeah. was like Nirvana for you. It's a again. Did I mention we are very simple creatures? And I apologize. I'm coughing like like Dan O'Toole at the end of Sports Now, is this because you have just returned from the Grey Cup and you just ripped <laughs> it up for seventy-two straight hours? I'd like to say I was at the same level as some of our brethren, but I was more because I was done work at 2 p.m. I was more the, the day drinking guy. Right. But then by like 10, 11 o'clock, I'm like, I'm checking out. I'm 44. I got to go to bed now. But I have to say, Calgary, what a glorious city. I, I had the best time. Yeah. Was that your first time ever there? I've never been there before. Never been there before and just had – an absolute blast, um, and, you know, beyond all, like, like, first off, just the Grey Cup stuff, the football stuff is a blast, and then beyond that, like, the different wine stores and wine bars. Like, I gotta tell you, let's talk. Let's talk about that, because you, you sent out some tweets, I think it might have been Friday night. Yeah, it was. And you were raving about the, the wine store culture in Calgary, and I replied that this is something that comes from a province that understands the privatizing booze is something that is good for the citizens of the province. Absolutely. And listen, the LCBO does some good stuff in rural areas and in terms of some of their block buying. They do they, what they do they can, 
They yeah. do what they can, but it, it's it's time but for them to go. We it's don't time need to for suck go, up to, to the. Bye-bye. We don't yeah. need to suck up to the LCBO. Yeah. The LCBO, okay. <laughs> the LCBO, to me is a dinosaur that needs to die immediately. And I feel, but, you know, I don't feel any remorse saying that. I know people are employed by the LCBO. Guess what? They'll be employed by private liquor stores too and par- private wine stores too. It's a f- joke that this will, province you can only buy booze at one place. It's a joke. I will say this about the LCBO. It's a combination of a very draconian slash paternalistic view of alcohol um, and about how they treat us in Ontario. Like, you know, if you serve uh, booze at other places, suddenly we're going to go wild. But I will say this. Like, I went to three different wine stores on that Friday. Everyone I went into, they're pouring me drinks. You know, they find out I have some slight wine bona fides. Like the Kensington Wine Market, Vine Styles, the Cellar Wine Store. I want to give a shout out to all three. Just wonderful. And what they all have is individualism, individualism personality. Yes. They're not like the, L, the monolithic LCBO. It was just a joy uh, for someone who got to spend like six, seven hours wandering around Calgary. Yeah, see, what you just described is something that people would love, like going to a place yeah. where you can you can walk out with some wine and yes. uh, you can taste it. But uh, and there and there's a stake. You know, the owners of those stores have a genuine stake in in the wines that they're bringing in, in the sense that they believe that they're it's great product and they want to explain the product to the customers and all that stuff. Uh, you know, it just oh god, it drives me nuts. The LCBO, it just drives me insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, I had a blast. And then the, the wine bar in Kensington, wine bar Kensington. I mean, that area was great. But you're right. Like every owner, they felt passionate about it. And they could talk to you about almost every wine there and the winemaker. And they would tell you the story. You know, I mean, I ended up because I'm a nerd when it comes to wine. I ended up buying some like, you know, funky German Riesling um, because I love the story of the winemaker that they told me about. I'm like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to buy this. And you know, and other places, so much support for BC wine and other places for Canadian wine or other funky places around the world. Like, it just, it made you enjoy drinking and learning about wine so much more than you'll get at the LCBO. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Did you see um, the new library in downtown Calgary? No. Oh, okay, it was gorgeous. Um, <laughs> the no. game the game itself, uh, kind of a dud, but overall, yeah. I feel like a good story in the in the sense that, you know, Andrew Harris has uh, the suspension in the year and then just sort of has that, that ultimate f*** you game, you know, in the Grey Cup, like that ultimate, like, I'm going to show was, the world. Andrew Harris was a bit of a grumpy galoot. Like, he got angry at all of us afterwards, called him, we're doubting him, like, we didn't doubt you. We just wondered about the steroids. And by the way, I still would have voted for him. You know, I still would have voted for him for some of the awards. To me, the greatest story was Zach Caleros, yeah. who going into week 19, week 19 of the CFL season, had played for more teams than he had pass attempts, which was 3-0 to zero <laughs> when he got traded from Toronto to Winnipeg. That's right. To do that, and then to beat Calgary, Saskatchewan on the road, then to beat a 16-win Hamilton team, that was a even for CFL standards. That was a crazy story. That was the first move that uh, Pinball Clemens made as GM yeah. of the Argos. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, we, we, we bringing him in or trading him out? Which one was was Pinball part of? Uh, trading, trading him out. Okay. Well, then we got to fire Pinball right now. That guy <laughs> is a disaster. <laughs> no one likes him. Uh, he does not represent the city well. But you you could see why they didn't. <laughs> They didn't need him this year, and he's going to be in. And Caleros is an unrestricted free agent. Yeah, that's right. You know, so I, I'm happy. I'm, I, I'm happy he won a great cup because this guy was the best player in the CFL in 2015 and then was a bit of a no-show after that. Uh, not a no-show, excuse well, me. But it's just, the injuries were like... The injuries, yeah. The concussions, yeah. the injuries. He just became irrelevant. So to go from that to the cup is incredible. No, he was really good. Okay, we're going to finish with this, Matt Cause, because yeah. um, well, I want you to get some rest, get some Neo Citrin in you. I, I'm coughing like crazy. It's, this is so embarrassing. No, no, no. You've no, handled yeah, this very, you very well. Very By the well. way... Neo Citron, if I have it, it gives me the Jimmy likes. It's got that active ingredient oh, that does yeah. not agree with me. That's what Daddy likes. Can I, can I tell you what I'm taking right now? What? Yeah. It's from Walgreens in the States. It's called Oral Relief. Oh, go on. <laughs> I've been spraying a lot of Oral Relief. I got to tell you, it's not relieving me at all. It says oh, wow. it's It'll fast be fine. acting. <laughs> it's like a numbing spray, correct? Yeah, it is. It says it's both fast acting and long lasting. My Oral Relief is doing neither of these to me. 
Mm. Well, let's let's give you some oral relief and get you out of here with this. We wanted to rank these. You're so good. I love on your radio show on TSN 1050, you always rank things. Yep. You you rank uh, desserts, fruit, all sorts of interesting things. So, very, wait, what's your number one dessert at a restaurant? My number one uh, uh, would be uh, uh, the Italian dessert, uh, tiramisu. tiramisu. No, my God. Yes. That is the most overrated dessert <laughs> no. on f***ing earth. No, it's delicious. It is the f- Worst. No, it's Dan, yummy. I'm going to find you and I'm going to punch you in the f- face a thousand f- <laughs> times. Yeah. There's one. Uh, this new Italian no, bakery it's... opened, uh, Matt, right by my house. I got to take you there. They they make homemade tiramisu, family, you know, Italian family uh, from Woodbridge. Incredible. We had some on Friday night. The today. correct answer is creme brulee. I, I like creme brulee. I like creme brulee. Top three. Vanilla bean flavored creme brulee would be in my top three. It's not number one. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about what we were going to talk about. We were going to rank our top three chip flavors. Now, a caveat, you can include the the Dorito style that, that, you know, the taco style chips in this if you want to. So just we're keeping it to three just to keep it really simple. So why don't we start with you, Matt, your top three potato chip or taco type chip flavors. You want to go three to one or one? Yeah, three three to one. one. Let's go three three to one. Three to one, number three, the blue bag, Doritos Cool Ranch. Cool Ranch. Okay, let's talk about this. I haven't this had those from, in 10 years. Are the, is this yeah. something from childhood? Like, or are you just always stuck with it? Or what was the deal there? I, uh, yeah, just as a teenager, and I feel like I'm really emotional about it. Yeah, just as a teenager of the Doritos between the red and the blue, yeah. I always chose the blue. So I'd always go uh, cool, cool Ranch. ranch. If we're going to do a Dorito, it's going to be Cool Ranch. I don't like when Doritos gets too many flavors. Then it's just an orgy of chemicals, and I can't figure them out. Yeah, there's a, there are too many. They need to simplify. Okay, yeah. what's your number two? Number two, this one's, I know it's going to be boring, but I, I'm fine with it. But you get, like, a really good, like, say, kettle chip, kettle brand, plain. Just plain potato chip. I know that I'm going to get a lot of abuse for it, but uh, I, it goes really well with uh, Chardonnay and with a lot of other foods. So just plain potato chips, but a high-end potato chip. Okay. Okay. And number one, Lay's salt and vinegar. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. That is good a pretty good call. chip. That is a pretty yeah, good I chip. I do love those. Apologies okay. to Canada. I'm not a ketchup chip guy off the top. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to make my top three. I don't think you have to be. All right, Dan, what about you? Oh, I'm, I've got to rank them too? Yeah. Okay. you got to uh, go three to one. Okay. I'm going to go with them. Um, Dan until now? Uh, original Doritos. So the, like, like not, s- nacho, the yes. red ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's your number three. That's number three. Okay. Uh, at number two, I'm going to go ketchup chips. Wow. Okay. Number two. Okay. And number one, same, Lay's salt and vinegar. Wow. Yeah. Right. There we okay. go. We're getting along now. Yes. All right. For me, this, I'm going way different than you guys. Number three for me is Old Dutch dill pickle. Classic dill pickle. I'm a Western mm-hmm. Canadian boy. I love my Old Dutch, and the dill pickle is the finest. Number two Amazing chip company from New Brunswick. The Albright family owns them. Covered Bridge Chips. If you've never had them, you got to I passed their factory this summer on our RV trip. So delicious. All their chips are delicious. But I love the dill pickle, but I'm going to go with the sea salt and vinegar there. So I'm going salt and vinegar for that one. That's number two. Covered Bridge, got to get them. So yummy. But my number one, and this is like you, Matt, is like a nostalgia thing for me. And you can't get them that easily out here, unfortunately. The Old Dutch nacho version Ooh. of their like Dorito style chips. Okay. Yep. They're in the red bag. So they have a taco version, which is in a sort of an orange bag. And the red bag is a nacho version. And those are my favorite all time chips. I will destroy bags of those chips. Those are my top three. Those are good. Th- you know what? Everyone good list. Everyone good list. I'm glad Stoff? we're able to get along better here. Just and wait, Stoff. Attack on me. We need to get Stoff's three. All right, I'll go uh, number three, barbecue. No one took that one. Okay, yeah. Number two, ketchup. Mm-hmm, Canadian thank you. Popular flavor. And I'll agree with Matt on the uh, kettle chips, just plain. Wow. Very okay. lovely. For That's number, number one. one. That's the number one. one. Okay. And my guilty pleasure, I'll say Pringles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My daughter loves Pringles. I find they're not so good in my tummy anymore because Pring- I don't know. They're like potato powder, right? They're making. Yeah. Yeah. And Pringles, they have the. Um, the airplane chips. Yeah. They've got that market cornered because yeah. the other ones deflate, but the cans do not. As soon as we get on a plane, my daughter's like, mustache chips? I'm like, yeah, all right, here we go. <laughs> get the mustache chips in here. Bring them in, lady. Hurry up! 
Well, Matt, cause it's uh, it's been great. Where can uh, everyone uh, hear and see you or read you? Follow what you. I'm around. You can always <laughs> find me somewhere. I'm always somewhere. You gotta follow. What's your uh, Twitter handle? You gotta follow Matt on Twitter. It's uh, it's M Cause uh, fifty six M C A U Z five six on Twitter. That's the easiest place to find me. That's where I spend most of my time. Did you I, go I every? All... Did you start at one and work your way up to to fifty six? No, I did fifty six because of New York Giants linebacker Lawrence Taylor because oh. I wanted someone you know that morally I can uh, I can equate my own absolutely. Life to I mean, yeah. if that yeah. if you're following someone's <laughs> off the field life, <laughs> it's it's LT's life that you want to follow. His his court transcripts are pretty wild. Oh pretty man, wild. I, I can't wait till the biopic, the uh, the LT biopic. I don't know if you know this. I'm in contention to play young, uh, like when he was at North Carolina, young LT. They looked at me and they said, you should probably be uh, Lawrence Taylor as a 19-year-old. And I didn't disagree. Oh, Matt Cause. You know what? You are a delight and uh, a wonderful person. I hope you're feeling better. And uh, great to have you on on the podcast, my friend. Thank you so much. Love you guys. You know how much I love the show and the pod. Uh, Everything about you guys is great except for your producer. So all the best. Thanks, Matt. Bye, Matt. And there it is. Uh, that was like an hour and a half. No, hour 20? That was a hefty one. Well, give me already, a little more Art, for your money. Already got a text from Art. Said, thanks, man. Fun times. Love you guys, man. Did he send another text after that <laughs> saying, did I mention I love you? And then one more text that said, just one more thing. Art actually just called back. He's on the line. <laughs> Oh, uh, Artie, good guy. Okay, well, uh, that was fun. Next week, I have a feeling Gary Roberts will be slightly more brief. Is Gary going to be in studio? He is. He's coming wow. in studio, and we're, so we'll be be able to uh, we'll do rapid fire with Gary. Talk about some of you know, like he played with the, those Flames teams. You can ask him about all the Flames, of course, the the, the Leafs and Carolina. Oh, it'll be great. He used to wear the big neck guard. Remember, he, his career was like yeah, I it was like crazy that he was able to come back because yeah, he broke that. his neck exactly and that's i think why he got so deep into fitness maybe you can uh, give us some fitness tips i'm gonna need them okay gonna we'll talk to you him. next week okay bye